Hi, thanks for joining me for Sunday Crafter News. My name is Dawn and I am here today in the Saskatoon Public Library, which is on Treaty 6 land, traditional homeland of the Métis. I am here alone today in this recording space. So I'll take my mask off so you can hear me a little bit better. I thought for today, because spring is arriving here in Saskatchewan, that it might be fun to make a giant paper dahlia. And I thought these would be a great addition to brighten up an office space or for a party or just to put around your home to make it feel bright and colorful and fresh and fun. The wonderful thing about these paper dahlias is that you don't need any extra things that you wouldn't have around your house. So the supplies you should have all readily available or you could find something to use that would be a great substitute that would work. So the main thing you need is paper. For these two, I used colored paper that was just the really thin, regular weight paper. Um, the red one that I'm going to do today happened to be just a little thicker paper. So when I did uh, the cones to make the dahlias for these, because it was a bit thicker paper, I used a glue gun to stick them together. But for the ones on the wall behind me, I just used a glue stick. But you could easily use tape, white glue, whatever you have around would be perfect. You're going to need a pair of scissors unless you have a paper cutter. Luckily, we have a paper cutter at work, so it made it a lot easier for me today. And also some cardboard. That's all you'll need. To start making the dahlias, you will need to cut 64 inch squares of paper. So four inch by four inch squares, um, and you'll need about 60 of them. I used nearly 60 for these. I had just maybe three or four cones left over at the end. That is what will probably take you the majority of the time is cutting the paper, especially if you're doing it by hand. If you have a paper cutter or have access to one, that would make this project a lot easier. The next step is to take the paper and form it into a cone. So what I did is I took the glue stick, I'll show you the glue stick on these red ones and hopefully it stays. And I just covered the corner with glue. And then what you're going to do is just form it into a cone. And it doesn't matter if you have a little bit of a, uh, an opening at the bottom, it doesn't have to be perfect. I tried to make mine all a similar uh, size. So the opening is about the same in all of the ones that I've done that I've completed for this project. Um, but that's it. So I just sat here at this table and made a whole bucket of 60 cones. If you are using glue stick, you want to let them dry for a few minutes. If you're using your glue gun, then you can get right into the next part of the process. You've got 60 cones that you've made and I'm using a hot glue gun. You could use double stick tape. You could use other white glue, school glue, even uh, this, the glue stick might work. It might not hold it as sturdy as the other ones. Um, but feel free to experiment, use what you have at your house. So I used um, a piece of cardboard and I just traced around something round. And this is about, I'm gonna get a ruler, I'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, I got a ruler. It's always good to have all the supplies you need handy. This is like crafting when I'm at home um, and I have to run around and grab things. I did this circle six inches across. You can make it bigger or smaller depending on how large you want your flower to be. For these, I also used a six inch across. Now, because we're only attaching the cones right along the edge of this cardboard, it actually makes it considerably bigger than the size of the cardboard that you use. So consider that when you're making it, if you did something larger than this, you would need more cones as well. So once you get started and you decide if you enjoy rolling cones and want to spend, you know, more time doing that, then you could make a larger dahlia as well. All right, so what we do is take a cone and just squish just the bottom of it. And we're going to place a little bit of glue and then stick it just overlapping the edge. Now the first one that I did, I left quite a bit of a gap between them. When I was placing them, I left a little bit of space. And at the end, I actually didn't really like that space, so I ended up tucking some in after. So I like putting them as tight as I can. As you notice on these, I made them quite tight together around the outside. And you're going to place 
the pointed part down. So uh, you will be able to, it'll look more like a flower petal. So that's the start. So what I've done is just glue a little section and then um, put a few down at a time, hold them until they're dry and then do another little section. So we'll go all the way around the outside and then I will explain the next step to you. outside round. Now, as you see, I only overlapped it by maybe about an inch. You can see on the back that a lot of it comes out over the edge of the cardboard, which is fine. They're actually held on very securely with the hot glue. Um, if you used a different kind of glue, you might want to let this layer dry for a bit and then do the next layer. But we're going to proceed with the next layer. And this next layer of cones is going to be offset. So try to set them in the middle of the outside too and then try to line it up so that the top comes just below the openings of the other ones. And then we'll start on round two. And again, just uh, put a layer of glue down and then stick a few and another little bit of glue and stick a few. Sometimes the bottoms of these will end up overlapping a lot more than the first layer did. So you might need to actually add glue on top of the, um, the piece that you just laid. Do a few and then I'll stop to show you what it's looking like. And sometimes just because of how tight the outside round is, you're not able to get them lined up in between and that's okay. It's just a good starting point to have them uh, centered, but it doesn't really matter if you can sustain that around the whole circle. I'll do one more and then I'll give you a quick look. This is the fun part where you actually get to see it coming together and see what it'll look like. All right, I think this is dry enough to lift to show you. So that's the beginning of round two. And then we just carry on until we meet back at the beginning. that's round two finished. We're going to now do the same thing again, just inset round three and make another layer. You'll find that inside those uh, bottoms of the petals will um, overlap a lot more. So you might have to take time and let the glue dry in between each one, but it actually comes together pretty quickly. now complete we're getting a lot closer to the center so these last few rounds you'll actually do them just the same just slowly work your way into the center and when you get into the middle you're just gonna push as best as you can one into the center it helps a bit to fold the bottom over for that last one drop some glue down and then you can kind of push it down from the top 
This is the final bits. I find when you get to the center that you need to actually glue each one separately. You can't do kind of a round like we were in the beginning because all of these will overlap on each other. So you glue a petal, put a little bit more glue in, glue another petal. So the center takes a little bit more time. And I'm not being super careful. I'm just kind of dropping hot glue down in there. As you can see, I'm nearing the end and I think I have a spot left for one more in the center. So what I'm going to do is just fold the bottom over and I'm actually gonna glue this last one right on the bottom so that I know that it's going to get really well stuck in there. And then I'm just gonna push it down into there. And that is how you make a paper dahlia. Happy crafting everyone, have a great day.